Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is? Time for a client lesson update. For those of you who like these videos, please remember to click like down below. Keep the likes higher than the dislikes. It would be greatly appreciated. But over to the point. Um, you know, one of the topics I've seen come up, I've actually had, actually had people ask me in the other client updates, well, all your clients are out of the novice phase, right? Because novices just need basic linear progression. And the answer to that is no, absolutely not. Now, do I have clients who were still novices who I've taken above? Sure, absolutely. I have one of my guys who still was way below my novice standards and who I've been coaching who within the last couple of weeks has hit, I'm going to put this in kilos because he does kilos. He has 180 kilo deadlift now. He has 160 kilo back squat. We just tested his back squat, even though I've had him do nothing but box squatting. It's his first back squat since I've been coaching him. He got 160 kilos. You know, you guys can do the math on that. That's something in the range of about 330, 340, something like that. Maybe it's higher. I need to double check my math. Uh, but he's there. He just hit a 100 kilo bench. So he's basically, in terms of plates, we're talking about a two plate per side bench, three and a half plate per side squat, four plate per side deadlift. He was still very much a novice when we started. He was basically like a, a 300 pound deadlifter. Okay. And that's been within, within like three months time. That's where we've taken him. So, and he's been on a cut because he was, he was overweight. So he's been cutting that entire time. So yeah, we do have guys who we do that with. Now I have other people who have progressed slower than that. But it has to do with a lot of factors going on. So no, not everyone is intermediate or advanced. Do I have some intermediate or advanced guys? Yeah. Do I have guys who squat over 400? Yes. Uh, do I have guys in the 500 deadlift range? Yeah, I've got several. But I definitely take novices on. And so people would say, well, don't they just need linear progression? And the answer is no. No, they don't need linear progression. The reason we prescribe linear programs with weight reach sets is to keep novices at the appropriate intensity level for their volume. Let's say you're going to put a novice on a 3x5 or a 5x5. Five five. Their sets need to be challenging. If you just give a novice who's scared to lift a squat program and tell them, hey, just squat to make it challenging. And I want you to do a challenging 3x5. You guys already know what's going to happen. If you do not prescribe weight increases, challenging 3x5 is going to be 135 pounds for the next six months because it feels heavy. It feels hard, right? Man, that's, that's weight sitting up on my back. When you prescribe programs where you make them increase the weight every single time they go to the gym, what's going to happen? They're going to be close to limit sets at all time. So let's, let's say you do that. Let's say you tell them every time you squat, every time you deadlift, I want you to add five pounds. They're very quickly going to reach a point where they have to do the weight reset. So what do we say? When form breaks down, when form breaks down or you miss a lift, reduce it 10%. Okay, because if you are working at sets of five that was beyond your capacity, like you tried to add five more pounds. Let's say you've been doing 185 for fives. You try to add one more pound and go to 190. It's going to happen. And you fail it. And you reduce it 10%. That was basically your four rep max. Okay, you reduce it 10%. You're probably going to be close around your, your seven rep max. Something in that range for sets of five. You're not going to get quality reps, right? You're going to get quality reps. And if you're doing like five sets of that or even three sets of that, you're getting enough quality reps to stimulate growth. You're getting reps that are challenging enough with the weight being used to cause muscle growth. Because it's not the weight increase that causes it per se. It's not the progressive overload. It's the quality volume that's creating fatigue. I'm just using the squat as an example. Right? We're using the squat as an example. But then that's only for one session that they're down to getting that. They might only be getting three quality reps. People say, well, that's not as many. Well, that's true, but they add five pounds next time. That five-pound jump probably takes them up to four quality reps. Another five-pound jump, they're probably getting four quality reps per set. Then they do another one, they're getting five quality reps on every set at that point. So what happens? You keep them in that range. 
However, they are hitting failure. They are hitting bad reps. There's going to be form breakdown. But you do not have a choice because you cannot let novices who are on their own, not being coached, use RPE. Okay, You can't let them decide for themselves how challenging a rep was just based on feel when they're getting all their reps all the time. They're going to way, way under train, especially on the big lifts, not on curls, not on their chest, but they will on squats and deadlifts. That is the only method that is going to ensure consistent progress. Okay, That is the only method that's going to ensure consistent progress for them. It's not the best method. Linear progression done like that to where you take stuff to limit sets is not the best way for them to progress. It is the only way that will work outside of guidance. You have no way to ensure progress otherwise. So let's come over to the novices that we work with. I try not to let my novices hit failure. Why? What happens? We film their lifts. I watch their lifts. They film their bench, their squat, their deadlift, their overhead press, their rows. Okay, We form coach them. And a lot of my guys take a lot longer to learn than others. Like people have noticed Mikey doing his, his box squats, for example, because he puts it up in his deadlifts this week. It's taken us a long time to get him to where he can do those. Like, you guys don't understand what his sumo deadlift and deadlift form in general looked like two months ago. Like, it, it was at a point to where I had to tell him that if I let you try to progress on this, I'm basically being criminally negligent. You're going to hurt yourself, okay? We had to do a ton of form coaching to teach him how to deadlift, and it's still not perfect. But there was an enormous amount of work involved. He was one of those guys who basically stiff leg deadlift a sumo deadlift. Like, butt would shoot a foot up into the air before he'd break it off the ground. We had to do a lot of work, and I had to reel his weights in on all these little same things with box squats. Like, every time I would let him progress on a box squat, he would rock the box extremely far. So we, I had to teach him to learn how to find the appropriate depth because he would drop it all the time. He basically enjoyed doing, like, full squats that looked really loose and floppy and he wasn't tight, but he can go like six inches below parallel. And he kept trying to do that on a box squat and then he would rock. So we had to do a lot of form coaching with Mike to get him to where he could even do a box squat and a deadlift correctly. Um, there was a lot of work involved. He took the upper body stuff much, much better. But he's an example of someone who there was more form coaching needed and still a lot more needed. Other people learn stuff instantly. I have other people who within two weeks have beautiful Beautiful formal squat bench and deadlift. It varies based upon the client. But you've got to form coach them. And then once you get their form dialed in, you can load their lifts based upon their bar speeds. You can watch their videos and assess over the course of the week how to progress them and how to keep them from missing reps. We don't need them to hit failure. We don't need to see form breakdown. You can keep them in your range by watching what their form looks like on video or in person. You can, you can assess their bar speed. You can assess what's going on based upon feedback and prescribe increases. And a lot of times with my guys, when they start getting challenged with fives, if I want to keep the weight moving, we'll go to threes. It's like I said last time, we can adjust weights. We can go to triples. We can use progressive volume back and forth with triples. You can do this with novice lifters still. We can do this. We can take them to a heavier weight when they're struggling with fives on a lift and do a three by three. Then the next workout, a four by three, then a five by three. We can increase the weight again, go down to a three by three. You can keep them moving forward, but on the backside of that, they have to have more volume. So let's take someone like Mike, a perfect example. Perfect example. We do a lot of triples with his bench, but he does tens on the overhead press to compensate because he needs more training volume. He does tricep work because his triceps were a major weak link for him on all his pressing. So he does tens on the overhead press, tens on JM presses. And then we program the bench. But we keep weights moving based upon his strength. We can watch weighted chin-ups. We can watch all these lifts and assess how much weight he needs to have on the bar week to week without hitting limits and without failing. Because ideally, you don't want them to push till the form breaks down. But if you don't with a novice who's unsupervised 
on a cookie cutter program, you don't really have any other way to ensure that they're gaining size and strength. It's the only way to do it. When you're coaching, you have the option of prescribing the weights that you know are going to be challenging and give them enough total quality reps. And then you can form coach it. And there's a big difference between coaching clients versus handing them a, a linear progression program. So no, everyone doesn't follow a linear progression when you are coaching them one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need to. You can prescribe weights based upon their needs and exactly where they are. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.